Thanks, Patrick, for that intro. You definitely made it sound like this is way bigger than it, should, than it actually will be. <laughs> uh, so my name is Raj, and that's me up there with my crew. We just graduated our MBA last week from Babson College in Boston. Thank you. Uh, it's quite the diversity PSA, no? <laughs> so I'm one of the co-founders of hashtag QMI. stands for hashtag Queer Much Information. And basically, we're an Edmonton-based dialogue group that seeks to gather people at queer businesses, games nights, cafes, or homes, and just talk and validate each other's experiences. It's generally an open, safe space for everyone. There's no judgments, no preconceived notions, cis people are welcome, and questions are welcomed. A lot of our dialogues have focused on marginalized groups, mainly within the queer community, mostly women, mostly trans, and mostly people of color. As Canadians, we're lucky to live in the mosaic that allows us to stitch, stitch together the multiple parts of our identities into a beautiful whole. The disconnect in experience for the people that come to QMI Dialogues is that we consume most of our media from a source that doesn't represent that same national love of different things. It's a fact we have to accept because of the size of our country, but it's not something that we can't act upon in our own ways. This disconnect in media representation specifically affects the queer community as people that are generally the butt of jokes and foils for larger storylines. It breeds contempt for oneself in not being able to match what is given to you as the ideal. Just think for yourself for a second. If you're presented with an image of something that there's no way in hell you can match, how would you feel? You'd feel like shit, let's be honest. So what is queer? Queer is anything that differs from the norm. It can be pansexuals, bisexuals, asexuals, homosexuals, transsexuals, transgenders, and everything in between. It's a placement of oneself outside of the norm, of the norm in the mainstream. It's an identity that's perfect for social critique. Queer is not a bad word. It's an owned word, a negative word that's been given a positive connotation by our own community. But the problem is that that's one word of hundreds and thousands that are hurled at these marginalized groups. And the effect of language is this, self-hate. Language is key to how we perceive ourselves, how we understand ourselves, whether we think we can survive, and more importantly, whether we think we can thrive. It's how we understand ourselves, and if you constantly hear words like worthless, useless, disappointment, not to mention an entire dictionary of insults that I cannot say up here, you slowly chip away at the core of a person. You destroy them from the inside. And this leads to abuse, alcoholism, and drug use. But a core outlet that I've found that has been instrumental has been art. Writing, painting, sculpting, singing, these are non-destructive outlets that have historically advanced our society. Queer thinkers and philosophers have changed the world because they took the scorn thrown on them and turned it into expressions of love through their works. People like Leonardo da Vinci, Florence Nightingale, Virginia Woolf, Oscar Wilde. These people changed how we saw ourselves as people and how we saw ourselves as societies. We need to realize that we are conditioned by the media surrounding us at all times to use language in a certain way. Would you say that grandma is a bigot because she uses words that you definitely wouldn't? No. But grandma has some ideas that might be bigoted, and we need to be honest, we all have ideas that are prejudiced. This is a fact. But through love and communication and mutual understanding of perspectives, we can change those ideas. This is why I propose to you, my Edmonton family, that we create a place to aggregate all of the artistic expressions put out there by marginalized groups, an exhibition or festival of some kind, Let's end the search for media that reinforces our biases, and let's challenge ourselves to grow by presenting ourselves with things that challenge us. If we do this and create a place where queer, trans, women, indigenous, and POC thinkers, philosophers, and artists can have a place to express themselves to a wider audience, where they can encourage discussion and encourage engagement with issues that we do not want to engage with because of our own fear, will uplift our society and will change our language. Patronizing the arts used to be the job of kings, but we live in an equal society. We are our own kings. We must take an active role in pushing forward our society. We can't shy away from critical insights that tell us through humor or beauty or angst where we're falling as a society. As Edmontonians, if we undertake this type of project to build an artistic exhibition or festival for queer arts, 
we can become a beacon of enlightened thought, not only for Canada, but for the world. We can show all marginalized groups across the world that if nowhere else, Canada is your safe place. You are valid and you are valued. When someone feels valued, they don't turn to self-destructive behavior. They uplift those around them. This is why humans are here at this point in civilization. We challenged ourselves and we can't stop challenging ourselves. By re-engaging with art that is not superficial, that is different and that requires you to change your perspective to understand, we will enlighten ourselves. We will change our language. We will change how we understand others and how we understand ourselves. We could start the next Renaissance by extending our hands to those that feel rejected and giving them a space that is safe, engaged, and willing to learn rather than wanting to shit all over them, will uplift our entire society. Who knows, we may have the next Virginia Woolf, we may have the next Oscar Wilde, we may have the next Leonardo da Vinci sitting right here. That person that's been rejected, but just needs a little space and recognition to feel whole again. A space where we can understand them through their perspective and through their art. I, this might all sound like fluffy BS, I understand. <laughs> if you think this is all BS, that's valid. And let me remind you of one person that was cast out of society and changed how we perceived ourselves. Maya Angelou said, I knew then what I knew how to do. Now that I know better, I do better. Thank you. <laughs>